Let's look at an example now to get some practice with some of our algebra basics. So let's consider two vectors, a and b as shown here. So a is 10 in the x direction, minus four in the y, plus six in the z, and our b is two in the x, plus one in the y. And we have three things we wanna find. First, we wanna find the component of a along y. We wanna find the magnitude of c, which is equal to three a minus b, and finally, we want to find a unit vector along some vector d, which is equal to a plus 2b. So first, for this part a, we want the component of a along u of y. And so in this case, this first part is actually really easy. All we have to do is locate our u of y term, because we're already in Cartesian coordinates, and just select the constant that's being multiplied by that. So in this case, the answer to part a is just negative 4. So if we come down here and we say for part a, we can say the component of a along u of y is just the a of y, which is equal to negative four. So simple as that. A little later on, we're gonna look at more complex cases of what we call projection. So let's say instead of along y, let's say we had said along b. So that becomes a little more complicated. And again, we'll deal with that later on. So now let's move on to part b. So it's sort of two parts. So we wanna find the magnitude of c, but first, before we can find that, we need to find what c is, so let's do that. So for part b, we have our vector c is equal to three times our vector a, and so our vector a, let me scroll up so we can see that, so we have 10 in the x, negative four in y, and six in z, so we have 10 in x, negative four in y, and six in z, and then I'm gonna close that with the angle bracket, and then we subtract b from that, where our b was two in the x, one in the y, and it's implied that we have zero in z, so we have two, one, and zero. And so from here, we basically just use the properties of our addition and subtraction that we talked about last time. So we can say that this c is equal to, we multiply this three through, the scalar multiplication, so 30, negative 12 and 18, and then we subtract from that our b, which is two, one, zero, and so remember we do this com one component at a time, so for instance, we look at our x components, we subtract those to find that our c, if we complete this, let me put the c there, so we find that c is 30 minus two, which is 28. We then move on to our y component, so negative 12 minus one, we get negative 13, and then finally, we're looking at our 18 minus zero, which is of course just going to be 18. Okay, so now we have our vector C. So remember we could also write this if we want, 28 times our unit vector in the x direction uh, minus 13 times our unit vector in the y direction plus 18 times our unit vector in the z direction. So either way is fine to write that. But if we come back to our problem statement, remember we were asked to find the magnitude. So to find the magnitude in Cartesian coordinates, we can say magnitude of our vector c is equal to just c, which is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares. So we have 28 squared plus negative 13 squared plus 18 squared. So we take, we evaluate that, and we see that it is approximately 35 0.735. So that would be our answer for part B. Okay, so now finally, we want a unit vector, which is in the direction of D. Again, this is sort of a two-part problem. First, we need to figure out what D is, and then we can find a unit vector in that direction. So D is A plus 2B. So here we're working on part C. So D is equal to A plus 2b, so our a, as we saw in the last time, was 10 minus four and six, plus two times b, which we had said previously was two, one, and zero. Clean up that zero just a little bit there. Okay, so again, same sort of idea here as we saw with the previous part. Uh, we're gonna have our a, let's just copy that down again, so we can show each step, and then we're gonna multiply through this scalar, this two, to get four, two, zero. 
Now we can add this and we find that our D is equal to, so we have 14, negative two, and six. And again, we can write that as 14 times a unit vector in our x direction, minus, got me again, minus two unit vector in our y direction, plus six unit vector in our z direction. But what we wanted, remember, was a unit vector along D. So thinking back to our video on unit vectors, we had defined a unit vector in a certain direction, so in this case D, as equal to that vector divided by the magnitude of the vector. And so we can write that then as we have 14, so 14 in our x direction, minus two in our y direction, plus six in our z direction, that's our numerator. Now our denominator is the magnitude of that vector. So we're going to have 14 squared plus negative two squared. Clean that up a little bit plus six squared, and square root of all of that to get our magnitude. So notice that, of course, we're still going to have three components. So this, this denominator is just going to be a single number, and then we're gonna divide each of the three top parts by that. So we're gonna have 14 divided by that number, minus two divided by that number, plus six divided by that number. And so ultimately what we get, if we plug that into a calculator, is we have our unit vector in the direction of D is approximately 0 0.911 times the unit vector in our x direction minus 0 0.130 times the unit vector in our y direction plus 0 0.391 in our z direction. And so something we would notice if we use stored values for each of these three components, our x, y, and z components, we would note that the magnitude of our unit vector in the d direction is equal to one, as, as we would expect. So hopefully this example with some numbers has made you a little more comfortable with our vector addition and subtraction and unit vectors, but if you do have any questions, please let me know.